Hey everybody, welcome to another live episode of The Grid. We are very fortunate today to have with us a man who needs no reduction, but he's getting one anyway. <laughs> Go ahead. One, one of the coolest guys, amazing photographer, author, musician, love machine. <laughs> Mr. Rick Salmon. Rick, buddy. Man, it's great to see you again, man. <laughs> How you doing? I've been having a ton of fun since I got here. Shot my new Kelby One class, uh, photographing on on the photo safari. Sweet. That was cool. So it's it's all good every time we come down here. I just saw Rick. I saw Rick for five minutes at CES. Yeah. Just like five minutes. Hi, Rick. How's it going, man? I'll see you next week, Rick. Boom, and I was out. But we're really glad you're here. We're going to be talking about travel photography today, which is really awesome. So we're excited about that. Um, and let me think. There was something else I wanted to talk about. That and something else. <laughs> Who knows what it was? Giveaways. We have giveaways, giveaways today. I know you want giveaways. giveaways. Hey, there's like a weird, is it a hair or is it a shadow? I think it's a shadow. Is it a shadow? Only the shadow knows. At least you're not great. Ah, forget it. Ah, forget it. Okay. <laughs> I don't ever look at the monitor because it's always like. Okay. So a couple things we're we giving away today. Today. Oh, Brad says they'll shave, they'll <laughs> shave your head on the break and figure it out. Thank you, Brad. Anyway. Brad's back. So a couple of things we're giving away today. We are going to give away Frank Duerhoff's brand new book, Mastering the Model Shoot. Right here. I mean, this is an awesome book. There it is. Uh, it was oh, here. Oh, no, it was here. It Somebody was took here. it. It was right here. Someone's reading it. Is this it? No. No, no. We're also going to give away a copy of my <laughs> brand new book until we can find Frank's, Photoshop for Lightroom users. Hmm. So if you're a Lightroom user and you thought you wanted to learn Photoshop, I got a book for you. And we're going to give away a copy of the Strap Shot. Yeah. We're giving away a strap shot today and a full year of Kelby One. So Kelby One is the merging of NAP and Kelby Training into one. Get it? I get it, Kelby One. one. Hey, you good. know what? It's I will good. tell you this. I was at Imaging USA. Just came back from Imaging USA last night. Got home at midnight. Really nice show. It was out in Phoenix. Yep. Rick, people are stopping me everywhere just going, I love Kelby One. You guys are awesome for doing this. I got so much love at that show. It's easy to remember. Kelby yeah. One. You just Kelby have to remember one. one thing. Just one thing. Anyway, thanks to everybody that, that had kind words out there and stuff. Hey, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, Rick Salmon's here. We're going to dive right into travel photography tips. We have a whole show on it today. We want to hear your questions and your comments. And if you have anything to ask Rick, he is a travel photography specialist. <coughs> we were here doing a class on yep. safari. Mm -hmm. and But you do travel all over the world. I'm teaching that at Photoshop World, too. Travel photography, right? There. Be there or be square. There you go. We're going to take a break. Don't go away. We're right here live on the grid. That was really clunky. Composition. What is it? Does this work? What about this? Leading lines, rule of odds, the rule of thirds. Viewpoint, patterns, contrast, balance. Dead center is deadly. I'm Rick Salmon. I really hope you can join me for my latest class on Kelby Training, Composition, The Strongest Way of Seeing. I'll show you how to compose technically as well as emotionally. Well, that was, a, that was a very quick break. We are back. Scott Kelby here with our special in-studio guest, Rick Salmon. Rick, you have a brand new app. Dude. Brand new app called Photo Sundial. You know, when you travel, it's all about the light. We're always chasing the light. We want to capture the light, right? So we have to know where the shadows are going to fall. We have to know where the sun's going to rise, where it's going to set, right? Mm -hmm. So you're going to get like the shadow on your face like you were talking about before, right? So learning how to capture light is one thing, but finding the best light is important. So the app is called uh, Rick Salmon's Photo Sundial. It's for our iOS 7, works okay. on the iPad, on the iPhone, has a shadow meter in there. And I think what separates this, Scott, from some of the other apps, I have a whole tip section in here. So, it's, you know, it's just not, you know, here's the sun, here's the this, here's the moon, here's the weather. It has all that stuff in a photo sharing feature, but it has all these tips on how to get the best sunrise and sunset. Nice, there it features. is, right yeah. there, right? Yeah, there it goes, right? So, Rick, and how much is it? How much is the app? I think it's, uh, we lowered the price, I think it's $1.99, right? Oh, are you kidding me? That's yeah, cheap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me click on it. Uh, if I could see here, photo sundial app right to the app store let me see if i was right on the price 2.99 2.99 well, well that's i'm not but gonna you can read all that like a dollar 99 i would have paid rick but <laughs> 2.99 that's over the top no dude 2.99 mm -hmm. that's a steal yeah yeah well it's all about the light if you're not there for the right light so this way you could sleep in later right you don't have to get up but like four if the sun's not going to rise you're six, right. right i want to talk to you about the light but not okay. first okay so what i want to talk about first rick and i'm going to be picking your brain about a lot of travel stuff today because you know i love travel pick carefully hey. i'm very picky about who picks my brain you are by the way here's Frank's book just showed up on the set. It's a miracle. 
It's a miracle of science. Some, I know that some camera will zoom in on it in three, two, two one. one, go. Crud. Uh, there you go. Oh, there we go. Let me see which camera it is. That was more of there. a cut. That was more of a cut. Frank's book. Give that away later. All right. I have so many people struggle with this, and the reason I'm asking this question first is not because so many people struggle with it. It's because I struggle with it too. And it's getting people to pose. Dude, I look at your work, and, I, and we're going to look at some of your work in just a moment, but the way you get people to just stop and, and pose for you, but it's, it's not just the grins. It's not, I mean, you get authentic real how, what's oh, the secret you. i mean I, I know i i have one little trick that i do yeah. but it's it doesn't it's not nearly as effective as yours well it depends and speaking of tricks this is actually a very good tip do magic tricks there's a store in new york city called tannins magic they sell every lewis trick. tannins lewis tannins i've been there right they sell every second floor it's up second, second floor yeah. and i go there i get magic tricks so when i go in ah, i don't have the picture right up here now maybe i could find it you do magic tricks you have to get the people to if they like you i try to get them to like me but you really want them to accept you so you have to give something to take something so that's one thing i do go into a place to do the magic tricks always work with the guide a guy to translate, like we were over in Bhutan. I have a picture up on, up on my uh, yeah, computer can we see this? now. You know, I had seen pictures like this in magazines, right? Where the novice monks and the young monks and the old monks, they're like working around the statues, cleaning the statues, praying. So what we did here is I wanted to get this shot. There were no young monks around. Our guide sent our driver to a monastery to pick up some young monks. The master monk, the master monk blessed our shoot, and then uh, we had the monks over. So I'm working on the shot. Like this shot, we really can't see the monk's face. It's not really right. a good shot. He was washing the statue, statue of Buddha. Here we see we can't see the monk's face. So I'm shooting, 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 and I finally got the shot that I want. And sharing the shots is very important. So you have to get the people to like you. Just can't say, okay, I'm going to go shoot. Just like Frank Dorhoff does. He gets. To, I was talking to him. He gets to know his models. And you know, one of my favorite expressions is the camera looks both ways. Right. In picturing the subject, we're also picturing a part of ourselves. Meaning, the mood, the feeling, the emotion that we project is reflected in our subject. So. And you have to respect the subject, very, very important. So when I'm photographing here, I'm very serious, but if I go back, you know, I'm having a good time. Right. So you have to get the person to like you, accept you, and you have to respect the subject. Okay, can we back it up way back? N not the picture, the okay. story. <laughs> yeah. Back it up way, 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 way back. Because you said a little sentence there, and you went, da, da, da. you have to find a guide. Right. Let's start there. How do you find a guide? So you're going to Bhutan? Oh, well, here, this was in Myanmar. Okay, Myanmar. Myanmar. So when you're going, Bhutan, to, you're going to any country, anywhere, right. first, how do you find a guide? Well, first of all, you have to realize that the guide is really the cheapest, most affordable element of the trip. So you have to have, like you point out, you have to have a good guide. So we, we work with resorts. We say we want the best guide. We went to Thailand. We went to um, Cambodia. We went to Laos. We had the best guide. Now, and is a guide provided by the hotel? Sometimes it's provided by the hotel, but in Myanmar, we worked through this travel agency. Agent, and we said, we're photographers. We want a guide who's going to take us out there, who understands we have to be there before sunrise. We want to stay out till after sunset. We're just not going on a tour. So we, you, you, when you go out, you have to find a guide who understands that this is what it's all about. You know, my wife who's here, she, she'll tell you, you know, I'm out there. Yes, it's nice and it's fun being there, but she said after three days, you finally relaxed <laughs> because I had to get the pictures. I put a lot of pressure on myself to come right. back with good pictures, but the sure. guide is key. The guide is key. They'll, they'll take you to places, open doors, go get a young right. monk right. from a monastery from a and monastery, get the monks to bless your back. shoot in the whole yeah, nine yeah, yeah. yards. Yeah, you have and to have the good guide. So can I ask you, and, sure. and I know that, that there is no, th this isn't a, a blank question, I mean, a, a it's not a question you're going to be answer that it's going to change from country to country, city to city. I know the answer. How much? Five dollars. No. How much are you going to pay? How much is it? It, it depends. It depends. Everything. I, I every, know. You know, every question someone asks me or you, you know, about Photoshop, it depends really on the end. Of course result. it does. But, but am I, yeah, am yeah. I, am so I looking about, at paying $200 a day or am I looking at more like paying 25 bucks a day or I mean like. It's a few dollars to, to the people. So here if we gave the monk five dollars. This is a lot of money. To okay, them. that is to the monk, but to your guide. Oh, to the guide. To the guide. Oh, to the guide. Well, sometimes it's included. It, actually, the guide is always included in our tours, but then we tip. So right. sometimes it's $20 a day, 
Sometimes it's thirty dollars a day. So twenty to thirty dollars a day, or ten dollars a oh, day. Oh, I see. So you're taking like a managed tour. You're going to no. Well, we had a private tour. A, a private tour. For Myanmar was a private tour. A private right. Tour. So we had, it's included in the price, but they make their money on the tips. And oh, okay. the harder the guide works for you, he knows. If he works really hard, you, you know, you're going to give him a good tip. So I say the maximum we've ever paid a guide was about twenty or thirty dollars a day. That's pretty good. Well, to get into a place like this, right? Oh, I mean, you would never. Not just get in there, but to drive to a monastery. Right, right. Find a young monk in yeah, the yeah. young monk outfit. In a young <laughs> bring them back. And, yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, these, these are wonderful shots. But see, I, I'm glad you're explaining this because when I look at these pictures, I'm like, how did he, did he just happen to walk in the room at the right moment and there was this young no. monk cleaning? And no. of course, I didn't even realize he was cleaning. Yeah. Um, but that was, that was such a terrific shot. So, uh, so guys, worth their weight in gold? Worth their weight in gold, for sure. And you find them, I mean, obviously, if you're doing a private tour. So let's just say, Rick, we're going to have to completely, I'm, yep. I'm going to make it tough on you. We're yep. back in the South. Okay. You don't have a private tour. Mm -hmm. You're going to, let me pick a place. You're going to, you've been to uh, Angkor Wat. Yeah, right? Angkor Wat, Cam Cambodia, right? Cambodia. You're going to Cambodia. You've booked your flight. You're yep. staying in a, a hotel in Cambodia. How do you find a guide for that? You can go out. You'll see all the guides there. Actually, in Cambodia, they have uh, outfits here uh, that say, you know, a legitimate tourist guide. Oh, official guide. They have a little, you know, plastic thing. Yeah. So you could ask them for another guide. But, for example, Susan and I, again, who's here, we went on a, the, a train in India. You guys should come on with us. It's called the Palace on Wheels. It goes throughout Rajasthan. So yeah. it starts at, at, uh, at, um, at the Taj Mahal and goes yeah. to the desert. So this was a tour. So each place in each city, it's cool because at night you travel and you wake up in a different city each morning. Every morning, everyone got on the bus to go to travel, right? To, right. to go to the locations. We didn't get on the bus. We got in a taxi cab. We said, do you speak English? And because we did our research before, we knew exactly where to go. So this is a very important part, doing the research, going right. on the web. Let's, let's take it right there because honestly, that was another one of my questions. Before we get to my questions, because our follow-up question is going to be, mm -hmm. How do you do your research? Right. But don't tell me yet, because okay. we have a couple of questions come in. I'd like to answer them real okay. quick. Uh, Alexandra asked a whole string of questions, so okay. we're, we're it's going to be kind of hard to pull something out of all Where'd this you go? because there's there's so it's one long streaming thought. It could be a whole show yeah. in itself. How do you start being a travel photographer? We'll start there. How much time do we have? That's what I'm, I'm saying. Serious. Well, because I have the answer. Yeah, okay, because we, we have, we have an, an hour. Okay, in about a minute, I'll tell you. <clears throat> I used to work, before you knew me, before you were a great photographer, I worked in, a, in a, an advertising and PR agency from mm -hmm. 1980 to 1990. What were we doing in 1980 and 1990? I was uh, four years old. You are four years old, I figured it. <laughs> so, listen, so listen to this, I worked in an advertising agency. I was playing agency. in a band. In, I know you're playing in yeah, a band. Yeah, that's what I was doing And you're not like going to be playing in the band of Photoshop. Work, yeah, right? not this time, no. That's too bad. We're going to play acoustic guitar someday with our friend Stephen Glima. Have you ever heard me play acoustic guitar? You might change no. your mind. I need distortion. <laughs> Dude, I was born. When they made an amp and they turned the gain up to 10, they were like, this is because one day Scott will pick up a guitar. Turn it to 11, like in uh, Spinal yeah, Tap. Spinal Tap, right? 11. <laughs> so how do you get started? And I'm serious when I say this. Uh, so I'm working in the advertising agency, and I wanted to be a travel photographer. I read this book by Dr. Wayne Dyer, Real Magic. You know Dr. Wayne Dyer? Yeah. He, he writes a lot of self-help books. And as far out as it sounds, he says, start living the life you want to live, and that becomes your life. So <clears throat> I go away one week. I get the safari vest, a different one yeah. uh, that I had now. And I would play travel photographer one week, come back and do my work. Next year, I'd take two weeks off, play travel photographer. It was getting better at it. Come back to my, whoops, come back to my regular job. Next year, three weeks off. Next year, I took four weeks off. I came back, I got fired. <laughs> But and I'm not recommending that. But I was I was playing travel photographer, and that that became my life. And I figured, Scott, if I could do it, anyone can do it. And you have to believe in yourself. You have to follow your passion. You just can't do something like this or whatever you do in life. Right. You just can't say I'm going to go out there and do this for money. So how do you make a? Okay, but you still have to feed your family, right? So, you're right. Well, I had a cush. Uh, my uh, my accountant, my brother-in-law said, when you when, if you're going to leave there. I know I was going to get fired. You, you have to have a cush. So I had money saved. I was 40. Yeah. That's a long time ago. 40. So I had enough saved so I could go out and do this. And I had a plan. I had a plan to write for book, write books. I had a plan to write for uh, magazines. This is before the web. So now I have the apps and all this other stuff. But, you know, you're a business person. 
I'm a business person. Clay Black, Clay Blackmore, you know him? Sure, Clay. He's, I saw him yesterday. He's an amazing photographer. Yeah, I saw him at the Canon stage where you and I were. He said, I'm a businessman with a camera. And that's a good line. He's also an artist with a camera. Yes, he is. He's but very, you look at Frank Durkhoff, all the people you have here on, I'm going to get it right, Kelby One are good business people. You have to develop a business plan, a five-year business plan. Also, when we got started, and we still do it today, we do trade-offs. You give us a good deal wherever we're going to go, and we'll trade you some pictures. So this will save you a lot of money. Okay. okay? Let me see if there's... Um Let's see, what do you, okay, well that kind of answered that. Um, let's go to Nomadic Vision. Uh, Nomadic Vision says, I'm a professional travel photographer. There you go. Yeah. One thing that shocked me was the amount of prep that goes into a trip <laughs> that doesn't directly apply to photography. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about insurance, camera, health, travel, income, blah, 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 medical prep. And so, uh, this is another one of the questions I was gonna yeah. ask you. Uh, so can we hold that one because yeah. I already kind of cracked another question on you. Uh, but let's go to Jackal real quick. So Jackal okay. wrote in, do Rick's private tours include time alone in the specific locations? Meaning you're in a famous tourist location. Usually you're with hundreds of other tourists. Does his arrangement include time when he is all alone in the tourist location to set and capture images? Whenever possible, this is what I was saying. When we were in India on the Palace on Wheels, everybody gets on the bus, we get in the cab, we go off by ourselves. Mm -hmm. In Myanmar, we had the private guide pick us up. You want as much private time as possible, but you mentioned Angkor Wat. We had mm -hmm. a private guide there, but you show up at Angkor Wat, and there might be two or 300 people in several lines. Right. So you have to get there early, so planning is very, very important. Hey, so when I went to Rome earlier this, yep. or last year, we went, we hired a private guide in the, of the Vatican, and yep. they get you in an hour before right. the public. And we were able to shoot, I mean, entire parts of the Vatican that were empty. When they opened the door an hour later, it looked like Disney World on its busiest day. Yeah. You couldn't even move through a hallway that five minutes before there was no one there but That's us. That's what the private guide's gonna do. The and if you have to pay a little more, a it's so worth it, right? Yeah, we did, we had to pay a little bit more, but yeah. I'll tell you what, it was, um, Actually, I gotta find the name of the tour. Uh, I want to say that it was walking in Venice. I mean, excuse me, walking in Rome. But I'll look it up here in just a moment. But they, an hour early, an hour, yeah. we're all alone in the Vatican. It, so yeah, that 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 is uh, awesome. So when you can do it, you do. You try to get that special yeah, access. Yeah, but, but I have a sunset picture here. This is uh, this Ooh, is cool. See. This is in Bagan. In this place, this is near sunset. There's more than a thousand temples, and inside the temples, the paintings are more. Actually, there's more than three thousand temples, and some of the paintings are more than uh, a thousand years old. But here's a sunset picture. There must have been on wow, the top that's of this. Wow, Thank you. There must have been at least uh, maybe 200 people jammed in on the top of this temple. So the guide says, well, you have to get here early. So we got we got the spot. But it doesn't look like you're, there's other, you know, two, you know. Right, you look like you're all alone. Sure. It looks like you're all alone. So that, that's what you want to try to do. This is a sunrise picture. He took us to a special spot for sunrise. Oh, it's beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Hey, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, uh, I want to ask you the question I was going to ask you earlier. We're going to get to Nomadic's uh, question. And I was going to ask you the question I asked earlier, okay. not the answer. <laughs> we're going to get to Nomadic's question, and we've got a whole lot more. We're live here. We're taking your questions uh, live on the grid. Don't go away. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. Hello, I'm Bill Fortney, and welcome to Olympic National Park. Olympic National Park is made up of a number of different landforms, all the way from a beautiful sea coast to high mountains, glacial snow, the wonderful whole rainforest and the rest of these old growth forests, and it all leads to great nature photography. And we're here to learn landscape photography and the techniques of landscape photography, but we're gonna do a lot more than just landscape. We're gonna do close-ups, we're gonna do water photography, we're gonna do high altitude sunrise and sunset work, we have a lot to do. So please come check out my class in Olympic National Park only on kelbytraining.com. Hey, we're back. Scott Kelby here with Rick Salmon live on the grid. We're talking about travel photography. Hey, I just want to mention uh, my my live tour is kicking up again in February. It goes starts in February 21st. Uh, at uh, Tampa, Florida. Hey. 
Right here. Right here in Tampa, Florida. So it's my Shoe Like a Pro Tour. Uh, you can go to, uh, I don't know where you go. Let's see. A lot of our websites have changed. Give me a minute or an hour, and I can tell you where to go to find out more. How about, you can just go to Kelby Training. Dot com slash like live. Tour. There you go. There we go. Let's see where I wonder where I'm going next. There's other places. So let's see. I'm going to oops, it just went away. Hold on. It's one of those scrolly things. Okay, so I told you Tampa on February twenty first, but we're also going to someplace else. Atlanta, Atlanta Brad says. Because Brad will be there. Yeah. On the 24th, three days later, I'll be in Atlanta, Georgia. Then on to Phoenix, which I haven't been in Phoenix since yesterday. Uh, so on the <laughs> March 12th, I'll be in Phoenix. Now, Brad and I are doing, we're doing a whole landscape thing before that one, right? Brad and I are taking a landscape tour. Nice. We're going to go to Monument Valley, and we're going to do all the stuff before we get there. And then uh, I'll be in Minneapolis on 328. So go to Kelby. Why don't you can just go to kelby1.com slash live, and it'll take you there. And uh, so we have a weird thing here that, that happened on the break. So remember I was going to ask, I said, Rick, I'm going to ask you that question when we come back from break. Nobody in the studio, including our studio audience, by the way. Hey, could remember the Susan question. Susan and Kathy, Kathy. Can remember what the question I was going to ask Rick about travel photography. If you are the first person to come up with what the question is, it's not about insurance and all that stuff, that one we're answer. If you're the first question, I will send you a brand new copy of my digital photography book, volume one, updated. You'll get it if you are the very first person to go, the question you forgot is this, and it's the right question. It is not the question about insurance, cameras, health, travel, income. It was I, the, I know the question. Do you? No. <laughs> no, you don't know the question. None of us do. None of the cameramen, nobody here, nobody, nobody remembers what the question was. Nobody pays attention. You guys don't, certainly. All right, we're going to have to go on to nomadic vision, Rick. Yes, I can't, okay, nomadic maybe, vision. Maybe somebody will come in and win this book while we're looking. Yeah. So nomadic vision says, I'm a professional photographer. The one thing that shocked me was the amount of prep that goes into a trip that doesn't directly right. apply to photography. Tell us about insurance and well, camera and all that stuff. Well, let's hit each one at insurance. Yeah. You you need travel insurance. Something could happen at home after you pay, you know, all this money to go on a trip. Something could happen, maybe you can't go. So trip disruption uh, insurance? Well, you need travel insurance to cancellation, but you also right. need evacuation insurance. Imagine if you're in on the in the Maasai Mara and something happens and you have to get out. You don't want to be operated on. You mean like, a, oh, like a health thing? Yeah, yeah, a health thing. So it, you need this evacuation insurance to helicopter mm. you to or, or take a, you know, get you in a plane to take you to Nairobi and get you out. So we always get travel insurance. Didn't that just happen to Jeff Bezos from Amazon? So he was in, that happen? Oh, he, no. he was in the Galapagos this week. He was in the Galapagos and had like an appendix or something, and they had to really? airlift him out. Hmm. Yeah, he probably doesn't need. <laughs> need he may back not. <laughs> he may he not need. His own plane. But you know what? I'll bet he had it. But you know, if you need to be uh, evacuated from Antarctica, it might cost thirty thousand dollars. But don't go to insurance. Antarctica; it's freezing up there. <laughs> uh, well, let me tell you this. Have you, you been to Antarctica? To, yeah, I've been to the Antarctica. I've been to Antarctica. Is it cold? The Antarctica. Not if you go. And this is actually a good question. If you go in there summer, which is December and January, this is when most people go. JP goes yeah. Uh, yeah, John around Paul. these. Uh, John Paul goes. If you go there, I've been on the deck of the ship in a T-shirt. You go in the winter; it's pretty darn cold. A lot of ice. So, a lot of ice. So this is why planning <laughs> is important. So insurance is important. So we talked. We talked about. You know, we could talk. About about getting ready with your camera stuff, all that. But health. Susan and I, we were going last year to a Laos, um, Laos uh, Thailand, and where else? Cambodia. And Cambodia. Thanks. It's hard to remember stuff on this set. For I some, know. I don't know what it reason. is. So I go to the store, the drugstore. I go to my doctor. I get a prescription for typhoid. I want to get the, the pills for typhoid fever. But then I needed the smallpox thing. And I was taking the pills. The doctor says you can't take the pills because there's a delicate timing between all these different medicines. So this is why you have to go to a specialist to find out not only about the medicines, about the timing. So listen to this. So the doctor's going to give me the smallpox shot. And he says to me, he says, I just have to tell you something. I said, what? He says, you could die from this shot. I said, why? He said, people over 60, you know, have been known to die from the shot. I said, give me the shot anyway. You only live once. So the medical stuff, you don't, you don't want to get malaria. Our friend John Isaac you, has. Yeah, I don't think you want. I think that's a pretty blanket statement. You don't have to really have to do with travel. You don't want to get malaria, I think, is pretty much just you, general you don't statement. Want to get, you don't want to get sick. If, if for no other reason, you say you go away for 10 days. Yeah. Do you want to be down for a day or two? No. So we talked about that. Uh, income. 
income protection, I guess that's like uh, travel insurance, uh, medical prep, we talked about that. Being fit is very important. I'm doing a trip to, have you been to the sand dunes uh, outside of Vegas in uh, Death Valley? No, I have not. Okay. I heard it's wonderful. It's wonderful. So I'm doing a workshop there. I do a lot of workshops. So I do a post. I say, you have to be in good shape if you're going to climb up to the top of the sand dunes, right, with all your gear and stuff. So Dude, I, I went out to the wave. I hiked out to the right. wave in uh, Arizona. And boy, it'll kick your butt. You're climbing all kinds of stuff. I didn't realize I was going to be like climbing up and all this. Yeah. I got stuff on my back. And all. Oh, two, yeah. Two people died last year, remember? Two people died going, going to the wave. Right, Susan? Yeah, they, they died. Wow. They were like my age and they, maybe a little older, and they died when they were in there. They didn't have enough water. Oh, man, that will do it. That, it's because it's the that, desert. It was like 112 so degrees. This is a very, very good point. You have to be healthy. You have to be healthy. Uh, and running your business, well, this is funny. Every place you go, you go to the ship in Antarctica, they have internet. Uh, we were in Myanmar. Every place, the internet's a little slow, but they but they have. Are those it. ships nice, like the Antarctic? Because I always kind of wondered. They always talk about like Russian trawlers. And I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I they, don't know. Yeah, they're Rus Russian icebreakers. I would say they're humble, but they're nice. Some of them have like gourmet food, great wine, mm -hmm. great guides, great naturalists. So you, you're not you're not hurting for comfort when you're on these oh, okay. uh, ships. All right, still crazy answered the question and wins oh. the book. Dun, da, da, da. What was it? The question was: Is what do you do to research before a trip? Remember, yeah. that's what I said. I yeah. could not remember it. Nobody here could remember it. You'd never seen more blank faces than when I asked that question. I was like, what? What did the thing about insurance? No, not that <clears> one. <throat> Thank you, still crazy, yeah, yeah. for doing that. Now we're gonna go back. We're back in it up, right? Okay. How do you do your research for a trip? What do you do? Where do you start? Our friend Trey Radcliffe, right? Yes. Good old Trey. He, well, he's young, right? And good young Trey. <laughs> good young Trey. Uh, stuck on Earth. He has this great, app, you know, yeah. app. So we're going to Myanmar. So Susan's saying, oh, we have to go here. We have to go there. We have to go there. So this is a great source of learning. We go on the web. We're going to Myanmar. We, we see where are the top places. So on my screen here, this is a picture from uh, Mandalay. Looks a little different from the Mandalay where we stay when we yeah, go to Vegas. Photoshop world. This is the uh, largest teak bridge in the in the world. And we said, okay, we have to go there. We want to be there at sunrise, okay? And we want to be there at sunset. This is just a beautiful, uh, beautiful location. What I'm talking about here when I give my presentations is envisioning the end result. So we did the research, and all the pictures showed beautiful sunsets at, at, this, uh, at this bridge. Well, we didn't have a beautiful sunset, so I added the color in Nick Color Effects Pro using one of those gradual filters. Oh, that's beautiful. Well, thank you. And nice I think post. what makes this, I think, is a separation. We always, when you're doing sports photography, right, you, you're trying to look for separation whenever mm -hmm. possible. So what you learn in one area, you could apply to another area. So I was looking for that separation. So anyway, getting back to the question, we do as much research as possible. I think we spent about a year researching this trip, Susan. I mean, about a year. I have so, one tip. I have a little tip, a little sure. tip for research. You know where I go? 500px.com. It's another great place. Dude, you right? go to 500px. And here's I learned this the, the hard way, and I talk about this on, on my current tour, is um, I go to Ireland. Never mm -hmm. been before. And I, I do what you do. I don't like searching on Google. I'm doing, I, didn't, I didn't spend a year researching it because I have a short attention span. But uh, I must have spent 10 minutes. Anyway, I'm, I'm searching <laughs> on Google. I, I didn't really find anything. Luckily, some people sent me some ideas. So I, I didn't, I never went to 500px. I get back from my trip. And I really felt, I even called my trip, when I did the post on my blog, I called it a scouting trip to uh -huh. Ireland. Because number one, I knew that I had not hit the great places. Right. And I knew that I wanted to go back because it was just amazing. I, I, one day I think, I'll go to 500px and just kind of see what they were getting. I go to 500px, here comes all these amazing shots, amazing locations. And then I see this one, I'm like, oh, I would have killed to shoot there. I bet yeah. it's someplace far, far away from where I was. It was 10 minutes from my hotel. Yep. I just had no idea. I had no way of knowing. I would have been there. I was in this one town like Killarney for like three days. Right. This place is like 10 minutes. I was like, oh. And so I, I go there because a lot of the photographers there will, will not only say it's here. They'll give you the GPS coordinates on how to get there. So that's my, my little tip. 500 PX for that. Lots of questions coming in, Rick. Great, um, great, great. So uh, let's go to Zoomy. Zoomy says, Zoomy. how do you pack for a shoot, Rick, when you're traveling with a guide? Well, you know, I talked about this when we uh, were uh, recording my uh, safari class this morning. <clears throat> weight is very important. Like, if you go to Africa, the, the weight restrictions on these, on these planes is very strict. So you have to pack very carefully. 
So we bring more gear than clothes. And most people bring more money, more, more clothes than money. So right. I say, you know, bring money, you could buy the stuff there. A lot of planes only let you have two carry-ons. This is my third carry-on. You could put filters, you could put memory cards, you could put oh, all you could put all this stuff in there. So bud. this becomes But yeah, these pockets are huge, yeah, dude. Yeah, you could yeah. put a toaster in there. Yeah, this is my Christmas present from Susan, right? It's That's pretty, very pretty nice, good, isn't right? it? So you could put all well this done. stuff in there, but I don't take a lot of stuff. You wanna like if you go into Myanmar, you don't need a six hundred millimeter lens. If you go into Africa or Alaska, you might need that. Who makes this? Uh, this is called the uh, Susan. Who's this? The uh, Weekender. The Weekender. Go to national. They sell it on the National Geographic site. On the National Geographic. And it comes with sleeves too. I took them off. You took off the sleeves. Took off the sleeves. Yeah, yeah. it's very you know. But this tons of. But seriously, it's a good tip. This is your third uh, carry on. So packing appropriately, and you want to have backup stuff. It's very important. I always travel with at least two cameras because you don't know what's going to happen. Right? It, it something could go down. True. All right, What's next, uh, still crazy. Oh, still crazy, we're loving you because you answered our question. Where do you go to do your planning? Any specific site? So we talked about 500 yep, yep, PX. Yep. Do you have a specific site you use? Uh, we go on Google and just see what's on Google. Go, yeah. go on uh, Google Images, all good places to find the inspiration. All right, so um, he asks, you were speaking about exotic places, because we yeah. have been, because Rick's just been to some exotic places. But uh, how do you prep for a city like mine, in this case, uh, ML is the person, is in New Orleans. How do you find non-tourist spots in New Orleans? Well, actually, this is interesting, because we're planning a workshop, right, Susan, in, uh, in New Orleans. So what we're going to do is we're going to go on the web, and we're going to do, like you said, we're going to do a scouting trip also. We're going to see mm. where do we want to go? What would people want to do? You love music. I bet if you go there, you want to photograph the jazz musicians, yeah. right? So you're going to have to be prepared. You're going to have to be prepared to shoot maybe in low light in some of the clubs. You don't want you don't want negative surprises. Yeah. When you go, you you want positive surprises. So the more research you do, the fewer negative surprises you're going to have. Hey, I, I want to say something to ML here. ML. So, <coughs> pardon me. So so ML, I, I think I probably know what your problem is. You live in New Orleans, which is a beautiful city. Yeah. I've been there. I did a photo walk there. Uh, I absolutely loved it, and I love the pictures I got there. The problem is, is it's your hometown. You're in it every day. It doesn't seem exciting. It right. doesn't seem new. It doesn't seem unusual. It doesn't seem fresh. You drive through it and work in it every day. Honestly, it's kind of hard for you to get excited probably about your own city. So if you were going to travel to another city and you can go to a city that's not nearly as interesting, let's use Charlotte, one of the most non-interesting cities in America. Just kidding, Charlotte people. It's awesome. Okay, so uh, if you were to go to Charlotte, you would, I would go to 500px, I would look for shots of Charlotte. There won't be any. So then go to Google. I'm kidding, I'm just picking on Charlotte just for <laughs> no apparent reason. I have nothing against Charlotte. I like Charlotte. Anyway, but, um, but whatever, you, I would go to 500px, I would go to Google. But you know what, what Twitter's really good for? Twitter is really great for saying, I'm going to Charlotte. Anybody know a good place to shoot? And you will have people come out of the woodwork. And you don't have to have a tremendous amount of followers. But uh, I think you'll find a lot of people um, that will be able to help. Now, is this a picture of Charlotte? Well, this is not a picture of Charlotte. But, you know, getting back to it, it's hard to photograph in your neighborhood. All right. This is a good self-assignment. Go back to the same place again and again and again and look for different angles. This is actually the lar largest man-made uh, stone structure in the United States. It's the New Croton Dam. When you come up to play acoustic guitar with Steve Anglima and you and me, we're going to go here. So this is one view, and here and the next I'm one bring coming a up. Here, here's another one. Oh, isn't that so this nice? Is, this is a different view. If you go back again and again and look for these different angles, you'll find different angles. You know, as a musician, Scott, you know there's a big difference between when in music hearing and listening. Right? We could hear music. You know, we just hear it. If we listen, we could hear the bass, the vocals, you know, the drums, all this stuff. In photography, there's a big difference between seeing and looking. You could go back to the same place in New Orleans and see the same sights, but when you start looking for new pictures, right, trying to cre create a different mood, and, you know, we've been talking technical here, and I talked about that in my class, but I also talked about the most important thing in a picture is the mood, is the feeling, the, it's the emotion. So this picture has a nice mood. It was taken, it was storming out, I like the mist and everything. And this is a little different shot, shot from an angle. So ML, go back to the same place again and again and look for different angles and you'll come up with different picture opportunities. You know, I'm glad you said that because I've uh, on my photo walk, like I, I did a number of photo walks here locally. When mm -hmm. I first started doing my worldwide photo walk, mm -hmm. I did, you know, Tampa and, you know, Tarpon Springs. And all. Right, right, right. 
I would talk to people that said, you know, I drive through this town every day, but I never really stopped to get out and photographic. I never really right. thought. And so just walking the streets would be a good one. Uh, Muggle asks, Muggle, that's a good name. Muggle, do you have a favorite location? So if you could choose any one location, Rick, what is it? Well, I think the, the, my favorite location is going to be the next location. I think a lot of travel photographers say that. But Myanmar, we had, I got the highest percentage, I think, of pictures anywhere in Myanmar. And I've you been to what? a lot of places. Vincent Versace says the same thing. You got to go to Myanmar. Now, how was the safety issue in Myanmar? We felt so we felt so safe when we were there. We were just walking around with our cameras, and we felt actually very interesting. We needed to change hundred dollars into local money, so we say to our expert guide, "Can we do this?" So he takes us to a money changing place in Yangon, used to be called Rangoon, the capital. And the money changing place is a bunch of teenagers, three or four teenage girls, with a little stall on a side street with thousands of dollars there with no security around, you know, no cameras, no guns or anything. We just changed the money there. This is how safe Myanmar is. Wow. I know. We were very how far surprised. Right? From the United States to get there, like it's a, lo a long way to get there. Yeah. Coming, well, going there was 32 hours. <gasps> Coming back because of the layovers. We left our, our, our lodge. We went on a boat, took a taxi, took a plane to uh, Yangon. It was a three-hour layover there. No, it was an eight-hour layover there. Then we flew, flew from Yangon to Hong Kong, and we had a three-hour layover there. It was, and then we took the plane 16 hours. Now from I'm Hong a, Kong? Now, I'm a little hyper, maybe more hyper than you. Could you imagine being on a plane for 16 hours? I, I've been on a plane for 16 hours, but not as like my third leg. Yes. And then we <clears> took the, uh, the cab home. So door to door, 44 hours. And I was sick. I got sick. I got run down. I got Did run you? Down. Even with all the precautions, but I'm... I, Man, I, thought, I thought I had bird flu. <laughs> all right. Um, and, and Mateus asks, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right, how do you find good spots without a scout? So if you don't have a guide, what do you do? You walk. You walk around. You go out by yourself. And actually, I just found an example of that. Uh, I was walking around in uh, Cuba. You've been to Cuba. You sent me that picture, right? Yeah. You, had a, you had a lot of fun. Uh, oh, I you, love, your pictures love were awesome. Cuba. So we're, I'm walking around, and I see these two blue cars. Now, this is a pretty boring shot, but I said, I'm going to do something with these blue cars. So I'm walking around. I'm looking for a shot. Just like I said before, there's a big difference between looking and seeing. Oh, yeah. So what am I going to do? So I'm walking around. And I said, okay, this looks kind of cool. I got down. You know, one of my tips uh, for my students is use your camera like a spaceship. Shoot everything from my level, it's kind of boring. You start using your camera like a spaceship and tilting it to the left and the right, that's kind of cool. So I'm down really low photographing this. Uh, here I wanted everything in the scene in focus. I usually like my street shots uh, to look like that, so it looks like it looks to my eyes. Right. So wide angle and small aperture, focus one third into the scene. So. You have to walk around. It's also important to embrace the situation. So I'm walking around, and this is a little grunged up with topaz adjust, and I see these people walking into the car. I say, oh, some people might say, oh, they're ruining my picture, right? I'm working hard on this. If you embrace the situation, if you look for photo opportunities, yeah. if you think for photo opportunities, you'll get a cool shot. So these people are getting into the car. In 1978, what were we doing in 1978? We weren't born yet again? Uh, that was seven years before I was born. <laughs> 1978, I read a book by Al Mulvey, National Geographic photographer. He said, if you want an interesting subject, have him wear red. So when I spotted the red here, this guy's getting in the car. Again, some people would say, oh, he's ruining my shot. I embraced the situation, ran up to the front of the car, popped in the car, and got my favorite shot. Oh, my gosh, that's a great shot. Well, thank you. And got my favorite shot from Cuba. Now, they don't, didn't speak English. I didn't speak, uh, I don't speak Spanish uh, like my son does. So, so what did you do? How did you get it? Just hold up your camera I just smile. hold my camera smile yeah hey guys come on come on come on come on and I got the shot I had a second now, wait a minute thing. let me let's back that up this is important now it was come on come on come on come on <laughs> yeah that's it yeah. that works yeah, yeah, that works. why didn't anybody come ever on. tell me come on come on come on come on <laughs> well, is these, the secret these, these come may, on come on come on come on these may not have been the exact words but again oh sure now you say that embrace the situation you I have love to that be ready. shot they look so great that's such they a great look so couple. great well this, this the, the wide angle is it 17 it to 40? So, no, a 17 to, to 40? 40. 
Is yep, that actually, it's a can. Yep, can, yep. Uh, F four. F four. I traded in my sixteen to thirty five to eight for this lens. I've got the sixteen to thirty five. It's twice as expensive of the seventeen. And outside, because we could boost up the ISO, we don't need. It's the, half the price. It's about. Uh, I think it's. A, I know it's a lot less. Seventeen to forty. Yep, seventeen. That's I have an, it right over here. Such an odd range. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this is the uh, seventeen 24. to forty. But here, you have to be ready to shoot. Talking about getting prepared, getting back to that. You, have, you should know how to use your camera in the dark. So let's yes. do this. Let's turn off all the studio lights, and let's see if we can take pictures in the dark. But, but seriously, you should know. You can't be in the, okay, what, what aperture am I going to set it so they're in focus? What exposure am I going to do, right? You have, you have to be set. And I think this picture captures, you know, the energy. You know, you saw the, how happy are the people in Cuba, right? It's, Amazingly it's like happy. A, they're like, like a, dancing in the streets, yeah, literally. It's, it's, like right. a, it's like a party. Hey, we got to take a short break. When we come back, we got great stuff from Rick Salmon here today. Uh, lots of great questions, too. So uh, yeah, yeah. thank you guys for... Uh, for that. Hey, uh, and also I see Matt Kluskowski yeah, some kicked Matt in there. Guys so watching. We can't yeah. see what he says because it's hidden behind the brake sign. They put this big sign up in front that says brake so we know to take a break because if they put it small, we'll just ignore it. Stick around. More Matt Kluskowski <laughs> comments and Rick Salmon. I'm at Adobe. Well, Sorry. We come right here back here on The Grid something. The Grid. The key to the headshot, and capturing a great headshot, or portrait for that matter, is expression. You can have great lighting, you can have a great subject, you can have a killer background, but if you don't have expression, in my opinion, you got nothing. Hey, my name's Peter Hurley, I'm a portrait photographer in New York, and here I am in my city. I knew I was a portrait photographer because that's what I do. I just am intrigued by the fact that we all look so different. We have so many different expressions we can make. Why not go for them? Maniacal. The art of capturing expression is simply working with your subject to get organic and spontaneous life out of them. Human stuff. Now forehead like a chicken. Hold that, hold that. I like that, good. When you have a person, technical is out the window. I'm 90% therapist, 10% photographer. The technical's done. I'm Peter Hurley, and it's all about making faces in portraiture. Come check out my class at kelbytraining.com. Shebang, shebang, shebang! Number one catchphrase. Hey, we, we, we're back. Rick Salmon's here, I'm here, we're here. Hey, uh, before we get started, uh, just one quick thing. So, um, th this week, on Monday, I published my favorite football shots of the year. So, from, from this last season, there it is, my favorite football images. But I, I, the reason I'm bringing this to your attention is, number one, I hope you go look at it, <laughs> but, but I used a new way to show these. There's a website called exposure.so. So not .com, mm. exposure.so. It is, and, and it is a blogging platform to some extent. But what I love about their platform is it's designed to tell stories with pictures. So yeah, if you just kind of scroll through it real quick here, and you'll see, it, and, and it's all, Clean. what's nice about it is, it's all drag and drop and WYSIWYG. You don't wow. have to know any coding. There's no back end. It's all front end. You drag the photos into place. You get to decide whether they're this size or whether, and, and if you go for a little, little, or you can make them side to side, fill the screen. Go down a little further to the detail stuff. Just keep going a little further. You'll see when there's, you can do stacks of them. Do you see? You can do little stacks. Keep going. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Detail shots. Well, it looks a little different on this browser. The, your browser's uh, stretched the whole screen. Can you pull the browser in a little bit? Because I, I notice it's losing some of its formatting. So pull it, the width of it in a little bit. And maybe it'll, okay, there you go. Now I'll go back and look at those shots. Oh, it's still not doing it. So on my screen, when I look at those, I see a, a block of four, like one, two, three, four, two on the top. And yeah, more like that. But I see six in a row. I guess it definitely has to do with how you've sized your browser. Anyway, if you want to go check these out, uh, go to my blog, scottkelby.com. Go to Monday and click on the little photograph and check it out. But exposure.so, you can get a free That's account cool. or you can buy, I think, 50 bucks a year for their pro account. 
I learn something every time I come here. I learned a ton already today. And looking at your pictures, it's the same thing. It's that separation that we were talking about. I was looking at your pictures, right? Whenever possible, you have, you know. All right. Can we look at a really good picture now just for a second? Sure. Look at Rick's screen. Seriously. <laughs> look at this screen. Well, I took this picture in Mongolia once a year, Scott. 500 soldiers from the real Mongolian army get together and they do this revival show. They come charging over the field. So you can That's see, amazing. You can see why at one time, you know, Genghis Khan owned from Beijing over to Europe. But as photographers, we're storytellers. So I'm zooming in. I'm moving in close. I'm trying to tell the story. You talk about the separation. Look at this group of soldiers here and the groups of soldiers on the back. The yeah. back in the back, background. The background can make or break the shot. Once again, I'm moving in closer and closer and closer. These so, are awesome. Thank you. So in travel photography, this is what we want to do. We want to tell the story. You know, I get involved. You said uh, you asked me before, what do you do? Well, I get involved. Here I hopped on one of the ponies. I got myself a helmet. Courtesy of Photoshop, I just cloned the. I was about the, to the, say the they guys gave you helmet in there. I got dressed up like Genghis Khan. I made it. I made it fun for the people. I even, you know, uh, Brad noticed this. I showed this picture before. They let me ride with these guys. Did that's you seriously it. ride with them? <laughs> no. no. Come on, <laughs> really? Do that. I was going to say that's kind of dangerous. But these are all my shots. That's a great shot. Well, thank you. And here's the thing: when we go to a location, if you're going to go to a festival like this. You know, it's okay to say, oh, I'm going to get great shots. I'm going to tell the story. But setting goals, well, setting goals in life is very important. But setting goals in our travel photography and in our, in our photography is very important. And I think all the people here who teach on Kelby One, they set goals. They know, they know the end result. So here, I'm with the, my uh, friend who was my student there doing a private workshop. He says, oh, I just want to get great shots. I said, let's set the goal of getting a shot that everybody who photographs running horses, you know, wants to get. The horse with all the hooves off the all ground. All the hooves off the ground. So what are we going to do to, to reach that goal? Thousandth of a second shutter speed. Right, freeze the um, action. AI servo focus on our cameras or focus yeah. tracking on our cameras. Rapid frame advance as fast as it goes. Frame a little wide so no part of the subject is cut off. And you left room for the horse to run, and that's a huge compositional thing. Yep. People get, if people are uncomfortable if that animal yeah, was right. too close to the you're edge. Right. Or, and it's not just animals, people running, if you're yeah, shooting yeah. sports or whatever. Cars. If, if, if you don't leave room to run, people get very uncomfortable. That's beautifully composed. Well, thanks. And the other thing is this. You want to cut down on the number of variables when you're shooting. So there's different exposures settings all over the field. I'm just working in one area of the field. So you cut down on the number of variables, you set the goal, and you're going to get the shot. Got to set goals. Very nice. Well done. I, and I agree. Jim Kearns, Rick. Uh, what does it for you, the places or the people? Which is more important or gives the most impact? The world has many spectacular views, but so does a smile. <laughs> the way that, that camera is positioned, it's kind of over my screen. There okay. Go. Uh, I would say I, I like to do everything. I tell people my specialty is not specialized. specializing. Right? Right. You've heard me say that before. Because I really do like to do it all. But when it comes down to it, like you saw the picture of the young monk, I really love photographing people. Yeah. Because it makes the slideshows and the books and the apps come alive. But also that's the challenge. You know, you go to landscape, you know, there is a challenge to get a nice landscape. You go into Monument Valley. But getting that, that magic moment where you're gonna photograph the person and you, you, know, you know when you have the shot. I mean, that, that's just so cool. And I, I'm working on a project called Strangers in Strange Lands. You know, these people come into my life, you know, and I'm gone, they forget about me. But years later, these people are still a part of my life. And actually, and I'm serious, sometimes I get choked up and I look at these pictures and I say, these people are an important part of my life. Like this, this writer, like the, like the young monk. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I totally agree. And you know what? I think you, you had a great reference earlier when you were showing those Cuba pictures. Mm. And you're showing, it's a static picture. It's a couple of cars yeah. on a street. But as soon as someone else comes to the... Uh, comes into the frame, it does take on a different dimension. Oh, there's a wonderful shot. Yeah, <laughs> this is uh, taken in Myanmar. This is, they call them long neck women, but it's actually an optical illusion. These gold rings are so heavy, it pushes down on the shoulders so their necks look, uh, look uh, uh -huh. uh, longer. But the challenge, you go into a place like this, by the way, whenever- Beautiful light. I, well, this is what I want to talk about. <clears throat> 
we have to learn how to see the light and control the light. So when I go to a place like this, here you see what I call the environmental portrait, the subject in the environment, and I take the portrait. But when I went in here, this is just <laughs> part of my slideshow, look at the, the rings on the, on the model's neck in the, in the Dior ad. Look at the horrible light here. Look at the contrast. This is the same setting. That's the same setting? This is the same setting. And you get a little closer, it's still bad. So we can control the light. We have to learn how to see the contrast range in the scene. We have to learn how to see the direction of light. So I change the contrast and the direction of light simply by moving closer to the window. You see I'm shooting with two cameras. I always shoot with two cameras, mm -hmm. one with a 24 to 105, one with a, here's a 17 to a 40. So just by moving over there, I can press this contrast range. So you say, I might say, oh man, there's no picture here. Well, there's, there were beautiful yeah, yeah. pictures. So we have to learn how to see that direction of light, that contrast range in the scene. So let me ask you a question based on this light thing, Rick. Mm -hmm. So I, I know that one of the unfortunate things, well, one of the things that I struggle with with my own travel photography mm -hmm. is a lot of times the bus leaves at nine. Mm -hmm. It comes back at it comes back so late that you miss sunset. It comes, it leaves so late that you miss sunrise. You wind up shooting in the middle of the day in really harsh, awful light. And, and sometimes there's nothing we can do about it. You show up at the Vatican at two o'clock in the afternoon. It's like, yeah. you know, what do you do in these situations? How do you seek out good light? Well, what we do, like when we go on safari, you're up before sunrise mm -hmm. and you shoot, and the downtime is like from nine o'clock in the morning till four o'clock in the afternoon, because the light is so harsh. Plus a lot of things don't go on. There's not a lot of action. The animals are sleepy. Yeah, in the morning, <laughs> they're very sleepy, because in the morning they go out to eat. <laughs> Right, and they're hiding from predators. Right. And then they ate so much, they sleep in the shade, and then at night they go out again, so all the action happens. Mm. So we plan our trips, we plan our days when we go out there to capture the best light. It's all about the light. It still might take some shots during the day, but I think they're gonna be But, but on the travel, shots. okay, so that, and I, I totally get that for yeah, safari. Yeah. But on travel, you're going mm. to Paris. Okay. And, and you're, you're in Paris for two days. Right. And so, because you know how these trips are, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you're gonna wind up, you're not gonna go, I'm gonna stay in my hotel room from nine in the morning yeah. until, you know, so yeah. what, what, how do you make the most out of bad light? Well, if I would do that, uh, I would find uh, city streets, right, and sh photograph in the shade, because sh photographing in the shade compresses that contrast range. You know, our eyes have a dynamic range of about 13 f-stops, digital cameras five or six. Yeah, five or six. So yeah. one thing we always wanna think about too is envisioning the end result. So we can shoot in bad light, and we could, you know, using a basic control like shadow highlights, we can open up the shadows and tone down the highlights. We could add, we could take some of the reality out of the scene. I might, to answer your question specifically, I might go for a black and white, because maybe so those strong shadows will look better in black and white. I might increase. That's a good tip. I might increase that contrast. Actually, I think I have right here an example of turning bad light into good light. I do. This isn't uh, exactly what you were talking about, but here we're on Inlay Lake, Inlay Lake in Myanmar. Talk about the research. I wanted that beautiful sunrise. Not a beautiful sunrise, not mm. a lot of color. So what I did is I made it a high contrast picture. I added a little sepia tone. I came up with a more creative picture. So Much, I'm, using, yeah. I'm using a black and white uh, perfect effects in On One Software. Oh yeah, yeah, On One, yeah. So this is, and here's another shot. Not really a lot of light. But you can see here, I'm talking about that separation again. His head is separated, his hand is separated. This is a leg rower. They call these leg rowers. They row with their boats. Not a lot of color. What I did here, I took out some of the color. So, by, you know, people like, you know, strong, colorful pictures, but they also like strong black and white images. So, if you're out there in Paris and it's not nice, think about black and white. And what's cool about that is once you start thinking in black and white, you're going to see in black and white. You're going to see that sky. Oh, no, yeah, that's true. That's right, cool. All right. Hey, we're, we're, we're almost out of time. I, I want to do our contest. So uh, for our contest, here's how you enter to win one of the wonderful gifts that we have today. The fabulous prizes. Go to kelbytv.com slash contest. Then you're going to choose from the little pop-up menu. You're watching The Grid. You're going to put your name in, your email address. You don't have to put in your website, but down there in the comments section, what you really want to tell us is which of the prizes that we're, having, we're giving away today that you would hope to win. So that way we don't send you a book that you don't want or another prize that you don't want. So our prizes today, just to recap, are Frank Duerhoff's book. This book is tearing it up. Yeah, yeah. This book has so many five-star reviews. It's selling so 
well. Congratulations to Frank. It's really a, he did a brilliant job on this. So it's it's mastering the model shoot. It's everything a photographer needs to know before, during, and after the shoot. And so we helped Frank work on this. It's a great. I was his I editor on this book. He, he came to my house. He was so proud that you did that. Oh, he dude, he did. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I give all the props to Frank. It's it's yeah. all about Frank. So uh, anyway, we're giving away a copy of this. We're also giving a copy away of my brand new book here. Photoshop for Lightroom users, brand new book. And look, look how thin it is, because I only covered just the stuff you need to know. Not You don't have to learn all of Photoshop, but if you can just learn 10 or 15%, cool. you're set. And then we're gonna give away a strap shot. So this is a way to carry your camera in a uh, on a strap, basically. Mm -hmm. It goes around your back or around the front, pulls it around, it's, it's new, it's cool. Strap shot. But can I win strap shot. No, you may not. Uh, <laughs> and uh, that's all we're really gonna give away today, it's just those three things, and I think that's just lovely. Cool. Now, so just tell us which one of those you want. Matt Kluskowski is actually at Adobe headquarters today. He's out in San Jose in a meeting, but he's still watching the show, which means he's not paying attention to his meeting. <laughs> anyway, uh, he wanted me to tell Rick that he said hi, and not, he's not taking you for Thai food this I time. I know, but we had Thai food for lunch. Well, there you go. In his honor. Oh, well, there you should. Uh, we have a couple questions, a couple last ones, we're going to wrap it up. Hubs says, I would love to be a travel photographer, but it's so expensive with airfare, etc. I don't have many lenses. What would you recommend for a nice wide angle Nikon landscape lens? I've got it. What would you shoot? What would you suggest? Nikon makes a, they make the 14 to 24, which is fabulous, yeah, but it's yeah, very yeah. expensive. But Moose Peterson turned me into, what is it, Brad, the 16 to 35? 18 to 35, 18 to 30, it is a third the price of the other one and is a third the weight. Wow. So the 18, sure it's 18? Yep. Brad says it's 18 to 35. I want to think it's 16. There is a 16 to 35, but it's more expensive. It's not, don't get the 16 to 35. There is one, but it's more expensive, Brad says. 18 to 35, it, it, it's, and it's very sharp. Yeah, yeah. It's not a super expensive lens, it's very sharp. And of course, for Canon, I would do the... 16 to 35, I really like the 16 to 35. The 16 to 35 but or the 17 I, to 40. You know, for travel photography. It, the, the, it's almost $1,000 less, though, between the 16 to 35 right. and the... What was 17 it? to 40, yeah, and that's 2.8 lens, my F4. Right, so you're losing one stop of light. Yeah, but if you're outside. And if you're a landscape yeah, photographer. Yeah. He's talking about landscape photography. You're not going to be yeah. shooting at F4. You could buy an F4 right. lens. You'll never, ever, ever <laughs> shoot landscape <laughs> photography at F4, so you're good. Um, so I hope that answers that. Uh, Kentha asks, Rick, do you have any... Do you have any post-processing on trips uh, to check you got it the way you want it? Or I guess, do you do any post-processing while you're on the trips to check that you got it the way you want it? The screen on camera can be tricky to get an overview. Well, <clears throat> everything looks good on the small screen, right? Everything looks in focus on the small <laughs> everything, screen. Everything uh, looks good and everything looks yeah. uh, in focus on that small screen. I shoot, I'm sure most of the professionals out there shoot with the pictures kind of small, but you see the histogram. Yeah. You have to look at that histogram. You want to get the very best in-camera exposure. People ask me, do you use a light meter? I say yes and no. No, I don't use a handheld light meter like our friend Frank Dorhoff. Frank Dorhoff. <laughs> Mr. 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 Light Meter. But I use a light meter that's in my camera. So when I download, I look at my pictures. My number one thing is I darken the edges. Ansel Adams said a picture's not done until you darken Looking the edges. edges. So I'm darkening the edges. The Renaissance painters do that. I, I have the highlight alert on. So and I you're a Renaissance man. Well, I try to. Artist? Be, I try to. Musician? I try. Lava. We're going to play guitar. Yes, we are. We're we, gonna, I'm going to play it poorly. You'll play it brilliantly. No, 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 no. Rick is an amazing guitar player. When I you did took a portrait that of you. When, when you, you took that picture time. of me, yeah, yeah, yeah. You were rocking it out. So, dude. so I think I'm looking for a picture here where I show some darkening of the edges. But I'm playing. You know, I'm, my tip, my number one tip would be this: think like a painter. In other words, a, a, a photographer. Photography is is uh, subtractive. We're subtracting from the scene by using our different lenses. Painting, we're adding to the scene. So once, once we have our picture, we have to think like a painter also. We want to think selectively. We don't want to think globally. If I could put a picture up here, let me just find a, a quick uh, picture from, uh, I'll, th I'll throw a picture up from uh, Route 66. Susan and I did a great trip out on a Route 66. Really a fun thing to do, fly to Albuquerque. There's no more really Route 66. This is called Historic Route 66. But anyway, if you think like a painter, painter's going to paint the scene. He or she is not going to say, okay, I'm going to sharpen the whole thing. He or she's going to say, selectively, I'm yeah. going to think selectively. I'm going to sharpen the building and the car. So once you start thinking selectively, it's going to change the whole way you process. 
So in Photoshop, you know, you could use adjustment layers and mask sure. in and mask, mask out. In Lightroom, you could use the adjustment brushes. But think like a painter. A very important uh, tip for photographers. Well, very good. So, uh, hey, we're going to wrap things up. A couple of things. Rick, where can they go to learn more about you? Kelby one. <laughs> well, yeah, I have, a several, you, I have several classes there, but at ricksalmon.com, I have my apps there. I have my books. I'm doing a workshop actually here. Starts next week. Uh, we have one spot open on this, my Florida photo uh, caravan. Uh, wait, I can't, I can't scroll around this, but that's okay. So I have my videos there, my workshops, my seminars. Ricksalmon.com. My apps uh, going, going all over the place. It's, it's a ton of fun. Hey, that horse is all the legs were off the ground. Yeah, yeah, that's in actually in St. Augustine. The caravan starts there. So starts if you have St. Augustine's time, wonderful. St. Augustine is really Dude, it's cool, beautiful. Right, right? It's beautiful. Oh, yeah. Have you been there before? Yeah, yeah. We do. Um, Susan and I do this uh, workshop there every year. We oh, go, I we love St. Augustine. Yeah. You ever eat at uh, Gypsy Cab Company? No, but where do we go? We go to. Uh, We'll try it. Gypsy yeah, Gypsy Cab, Cab Company. Company's nice. The Columbia downstown. Yeah, that's St. Augustine. Very what's nice. The, what's the seafood place next to the hotel? We can't remember. We can't remember. Cool. Anyway, lots of good restaurants there. Great. Got to stay healthy. Got to be happy when you're out there. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> hey, um, for everybody else that's watching, uh, I would love for you to go check out, since you mentioned it, kelby1.com. So what we've done is we've put together, literally, uh, we have thousands of videos, hundreds of full-length classes, and you're learning from the very best people in the world. For example, if you wanted to learn today, if you really wanted to learn flash photography, who do you want to learn it from? I want to learn from Joe McNally. Joe McNally, right? Frank. Right. If you want to learn studio photography, you want to learn how to shoot models, why not learn the guy from the guy that wrote the book? Um, go there. I mean, literally, if you want to learn wedding photography, we've got the best wedding photographers. If you want to, whatever you want to learn. If you want to learn safari, who do you want to learn from? I want to learn from Rick Sam. It's coming out in April, I think. It's going to be in April. So anyway, we add new classes every single week. We'd love to have you stop by and check it out. And the, the number of benefits now that we've combined NAP and Kelby training into one thing is just it's insane. It's very so cool. we hope you'll check it out at kelby1.com. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks for all our sponsors. Rick, thank you, buddy. You're the man. That was great. That was awesome. You are the man. We're, we'll see you next week right here, 4 o'clock on the grid. Take care, everybody.